Hello, morning, and welcome to Foxes of Sunk. Again. No, we aren't. It's <laughs> there behind us. Uh, when we left, well, before we did the why you should and shouldn't live on narrowboat filler videos. <laughs> Well, that's what they were. Come on, let's be honest. We left you at Barbridge Junction on the Shropshire Union Canal. Do you remember? Did we turn left? Did we go straight on? Or did we go up the Langochlan? Don't be daft. <laughs> Does it look like my head buttons up the back? We're not going up there in silly season. It's like wacky races up there during the summer. Do you remember wacky races? I do. Who were your favourite? Mine oh, were the Slag Brothers. Slag Brothers, cavemen. Mine were, oh yeah, Dick Dastardly and Muttley. Yeah, he, la he laughs like Muttley sometimes, doesn't he? can't it? do it now. Who were the other? Antil Mob. Until Mob. Uh, Peter Purvis. <laughs> that will blue Peter. Oh, well, yeah, Peter Purvis. Penelope Pitstop. Yeah. Anyway, drop drop your favourite from Wacky Races if you remember them in the comments. See if we can bring back some memories. That's difficult for you lately, isn't it? Hey. So we didn't go down the Langochlan. We went down the Trent and Mersey and a few other ways and we came here. And we are exactly 100 miles away, <laughs> right at the beginning of the Coventry Canal. And we're in. Coventry! You should have said rugby or something rugby. then, shouldn't you? <laughs> uh, we've been here a few days, uh, just enjoying some city life again for a change. And it's really nice and peaceful here. You can see the old wharf buildings behind us. They're not the original ones, they were built during the First World War. But there were buildings here before that. Although the old Weybridge house, where they used to collect the tolls, that's, the, well, one of them is still there. And James Brindley is right over the other side. Studying his maps or whatever they are. He's, uh, he's been studying his blueprints for 250 years. You'd think he'd have it right about now, <laughs> wouldn't you, to be honest? <laughs> they used to bring a load of coal in and out of this wharf. Uh, to and from places like Birmingham, which is about 20 miles that way. And also down to London, which is about 80 miles just behind you. I'm not going to show you that because there's a big brick wall there. <laughs> Uh, but when the pits closed down and the railways took over, it all got a bit derelict and it was looking a bit sad for a few years. This is where it looked like back in the 1980s. It's not uh, not very nice, is it? Uh, but a lot of regeneration went on in the 90s. Those buildings over there sprung up and they're now offices and shops and a cafe. It's, yeah. it's quite nice. Yeah, it is. And it has been lovely, hasn't it? It's been nice. But we're off today. We're What's do, to do today? Yeah, there is. We've got the five and a half mile trip from Coventry Basin up to Hawkesbury Junction. Uh, it's also called Sutton Stop if you're an old timer, more traditional boater. Yeah, not called Hawkesbury Junction, it's called Sutton Stop. <laughs> Amos. <laughs> Amos. <laughs> Amos and Mr. Wilkes. Oh my, don't you, set them off. You need to grow a moustache. I do not. Uh, so we've got a lot to do, uh, so we better get off. We had. Bridge number one, the first bridge of the Coventry Canal. You might notice there's no towpath through there. It's a bit weird. And that's because it was one of the very early security systems of its day. Oh! Back when they built the basin, it was meant to keep people out, thieves and stuff. And that's why they didn't put a towpath through. It is a turnover bridge, so horses could come round and back down this side of the canal, back to the towpath. There's so much to see as you come out of Coventry towards Sutton Stop, just in this five miles. And no sooner do you come out of the basin that we've got history all around us. My favourite named wharf ever is just around this corner, but we'll come on to that in a sec. On our port side is where the very famous Daimler car factory used to be. Back in 1897, the very first British production car was made right here. I think my granddad still drives it. <laughs> So this is my favourite named wharf on the whole system. It's called Electric Wharf. How cool would it have been if it was on Electric Avenue? I did some digging and unfortunately that's in Brixton in London. But you'll never get that song out of your head now for the rest of the week, will you? Uh, so this was Coventry's very first power station. The turbines were driven by coal and the coal was brought in by narrowboat hence the wharf around there, an electric wharf. This is where the boats would have stopped to unload the coal. 
Now it's been closed for many, many years and as you can see it's been redeveloped this apartments and houses and small businesses. And what they did is when they demolished the power station they recycled a lot of the bricks and steel into the new building so it keeps a lot of its character. Have you ever had a Coventry Climax? <laughs> what? No. No? Have you ever had a Coventry Climax? I don't even know what it is. No? It's, well, it's a factory. It used to be where our, on our port side and they used to make forklift trucks and they used to make the pumps for the green goddesses. Remember the fire engines? Oh yes! They also made really good racing car engines. They won championships for Formula One, for Cooper and Lotus. Really? Yeah, I want a Coventry Climax now. <laughs> Can we have one later? <laughs> Have you ever heard of the term cottage industry? I have. You heard of that cottage industry? It comes from cottage factory, which is where that place was. Under bridge two on the port side is Cash's 100 houses, even though there's only 48 of them. Weird. They've been done up, they actually look quite nice. And if you look carefully, the bottom two floors were houses and the top floor, there were loads of looms and they were all driven by a single steam engine. So the workers would get up on a morning They'd have the grape nuts. Walk upstairs. Walk upstairs, do the looming, weave all the silk all day, and then about six or seven o'clock on an evening, or when Mr. Grimes blew his whistle. Mr. Grimes. They'd come back downstairs, have the tea, bit of stew, bit of peck, corned but, beef ash. Yeah. Ooh. And that was it. And because they were living under the shop, it was termed a cottage factory. And that's where cottage industry, working from home, comes from. Coventry dates right back to the Roman times, over 2,000 years ago. It wasn't a big city then. They didn't have the football club. Didn't they? No, or the canal. Oh. But when you look around, not just the city centre, but around the outskirts, you notice that most of the buildings are less than 80 years old. You would, wouldn't you, you'd think that building's less than 80 years old. <laughs> and that's because a lot of it was destroyed during the Second World War. The Germans, ordered by Hitler, launched an air raid called Operation Moonlight Sonata. Sounds all nice, doesn't it? It's not though. It really wasn't. 4,000 houses were destroyed. Three quarters of the city's industry was wiped out and hundreds of people died. They reckon that Hitler ordered it in revenge for the RAF bomb in Munich a few days before and the reason he chose Coventry was a lot of munitions were being made here for the troops. It is good though to see that good old British grit. They got back to work and they built the buildings and they're still finding the bombs. Yes. Every now and then they find an unexploded bomb and have to safely detonate. How can you safely detonate a bomb? <laughs> Kablammy. <laughs> You've heard of Lady Godiva, haven't you? I have. Well, she came from Coventry, her and her rubby, and legend dates right back to the 13th century. And you know what she did? She rode naked through the streets of Coventry. You've seen that, haven't you? <laughs> but do you know why she did it? Oh, how all rubbish it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lady Godiva was married to somebody called Leo Frick. Let's call him Fricky. Yeah, just for example. And he was the Earl of Mercia. This is true. You can look in the book if you don't believe me. And he was the Earl of Mercia, although he was from Plank Lane in Leeds. Mercy, Mercia Marina? Uh, near, near there, <laughs> near there, yeah. And apparently the reason she rode through the streets naked was because she was really unhappy with how much her fricky <laughs> was, was charging the people of Coventry in taxes. He was basically screwing them in taxes. <laughs> and so she said she kept nagging him and nagging him, you know, like I nag you. 
Oh, saying, every day. Ricky, you've got to lower the taxes. You, these poor people can't afford the taxes. What's it gonna take? So Fricky turned around and said, well, I'll tell you what, love. You ride through the streets of Coventry naked on the back of our horse and I'll lower the taxes. And so that's what she did. That's why she did it. She did it in sympathy of the people of Coventry to get the taxes lowered. But she didn't want anybody to see her naked, although she was quite fit when you look at the statue. She ordered everybody in the city to stay indoors, close the curtains and not come out and not look at her. Not even peeping through your nets. You're not allowed. Through your nets. But one did. A tailor called Tom. He opened his door a little bit and had a look. And he was struck blind. Really? Or, or one of her henchmen punched him in face a few times. Probably. One of the two. And that's where the term peeping Tom comes from. Ooh. Even though a lot of people and the guidebooks call it the Coventry Arm, it is in fact part of the main line of the 38 miles of the Coventry Canal, which goes from the basin in Coventry where we started right up to Fradley Junction, where the Trent and Mersey Canal is. And it's a bit of a pity really, because since leisure boating became a big thing, most people come down to Hawkesbury Junction at Sutton Stop and go across and straight onto the Oxford and vice versa. Which is a bit of a shame because it's not a bad five and a half miles. It's got its issues. It's a bit shallow, it's a bit grubby, in some places it's a bit noisy, and there's a bit of a sheen to the canal for some reason, but there's a lot of history. And if you're into that, it's a bit of a fascinating couple of hours. This five and a half mile stretch is also an award-winning heritage trail. Uh, there's 39 different art installations and they've been done by uh, professional artists and also local people too. And some of them are a little bit, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's like a thing with art. You don't get art at all, do you? No. Like, like something's weird for the sake of being weird. It's weird. And ooh, bread. I can smell can bread. Smell, ooh, bread. Stuff the artwork. Where's that coming from? <laughs> Luckily, good old Silver Fox is built of hard stuff and the speedy hire boat bounced off us, leaving just a little scar in the paintwork, which was looking like new again before the kettle had even boiled. Inside the boat, poor Grogu fell over, but he managed to use the force to get himself back on his feet. While we were all outside, Otis took advantage of the faff that was going on. He sneaked into the galley and helped himself to a chewy chicken treat. After watching the footage, the hire boat had apologised for going so fast that he was making waves and also for causing his poor guest at the front to scream. He promised to slow things down in future. All in a day. Between bridges 9 and 9A, the canal widens a little bit. Do you know why? It's all to do with sods. <laughs> Back in 1768, right here where it widens a little bit, is where the first sod of grass was cut to create the Coventry Canal. It all started right here. Can't you just feel the history in the air around you? It's not history, but I can feel something. That you are, Otis. <laughs> Why did they call it a sod? I don't know.
just as we come under Bridge 10, Longford Bridge. Back between 1760 and 1860, the members of Salem Baptist Chapel used to baptise the children in the canal. In the canal! Oh, I hope they had some antibacterial wipes with them. Uh, you might have noticed, just opposite the pub, the canal's wider than it normally is. That's not because of the corner or the bridge, that's because it used to be the original junction of the Coventry and Oxford canals. But yeah, that's what I'm thinking. The Oxford Canal meets the Coventry a mile further up, so why didn't it just meet there in the first place? Well, it was all to do with that at the time, tolls and taxes and things, and the Coventry and Oxford Canal companies couldn't agree on who pays what. So they built parallel canals for a mile. So the poor boaters had to come a mile down just to get on the other to go a mile back. It was a right faff. Luckily, in 1803, they saw sense and built the junction which we all know now at Sutton Stop, Hawkesbury Junction. And that's it, we're off the Coventry. I'll tell you what, I'm actually a little bit glad because it was a bit faffy this morning. Boats ramming us and other things mm. that were off camera. Uh, so <laughs> that is Sutton Stop. Before that is Hawkesbury Junction, the new junction. I say new, 1803, but it's new in terms of the junction. Why is it called Sutton Stop? Well, that stop lock is a clue because that's where you would have paid your tolls. Yes. So you had to stop and it's called Sutton because there was a family called Sutton and they had a lot of lock keepers in the family. It's weird, it's like the Beverly sisters, isn't it? Or the, no or the Nolans. <laughs> the Nolans! They were like they were like the Nolans of lock keeping of the day. Did they sing? I don't know if they sang actually, that, that might be good to find out. Uh, but we're off there and we're now on the North Oxford Canal, heading towards Rugby. And Bronston. We're going to Bronston. We're not going to Bronston. We're going to Bronston. Oh my God, we're going to Bronston <laughs> again. Uh, I don't know where you're going to see us next because we're going to try and find somewhere nice and quiet and more up for a few days and have a bit of a chill. So till next week, I hope you've enjoyed this vlog. And if you're not already, please subscribe to the channel and you'll see all sorts of this sort of stuff every week at four o'clock on a Friday. Uh, click the thumbs up button if you enjoyed it and click the thumbs down if you didn't. We don't really mind which one you did. And if you hit the notifications bell, YouTube will let you know every time we release a new video, which we just told you when that is. I thought you were going to do it there. Oh, right, you've already told them, so I didn't think. <laughs> Take care, eat loads of chocolate, see you next week. Ta-da! I noticed was there, I don't know if it's fallen in or not. Yeah, I, I didn't hear a splash. <laughs> He's got fed up with this rubbish. For... We're doing it again because he missed things. I don't know who you're thinking of. Is that an old friend? No! Are we allowed to say that? No! <laughs> We gotta start that again! And and, and 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 I can't remember where. So we'll do that again. And they used to make uh I've forgotten. I'd like to create the story of Lady Lady Godai. But well you're a, always naked. On a donkey. I could do it on the back of a people say I'm a donkey sometimes. Only sometimes. <laughs> Are we dreaming this? Is, it, is this like a dream vlog? Are we going to wake up in a minute? I think, the, I think so. Back on the Trent and Mersey somewhere. 